So Betty popped in unexpectedly one day and said, Come on, we're going for a trip. So I got in the black Mercedes that was parked outside. You'll need to put this on, she said, handing me a hood. OK, I don't mind a few fun and games, but this was a little out of the ordinary. Don't worry, she said. We're going somewhere to watch some movies, but it has to be in secret or we'll get into trouble. By now, I was intrigued, so I put on the hood and we set off on our way. I tried to recognise the pattern of the potholes in the roads, <laughs> but there were too many to count. It only took 40 minutes or so and we arrived. I was led into a building and after taking off my hood, I saw that we were in a windowless room lit by a single, unshaded, incandescent bulb. It's a lamp. Bulbs grow. Lamps glow. Fine. It was a bit dim and maybe so am I. Betty took me over to the centre of the room where there was a single chair, an Ikea poang with a leather cushion, just like I have at home. In front was a home cinema system, just like mine. The TV was a Pioneer Kuro 5090, just like mine. A bit old now, but when it first came out, people were saying it was the best television in the world. On either side of the TV were a pair of BMW 801 loudspeakers, again, just like mine. But the amplifier was different. Bigger and probably more powerful. You need a new amp, bigger and more powerful. Betty's not wrong. Everyone needs a bigger amp. I'm going to show you some clips from movies. Watch and listen carefully. So Betty played clips from around ten movies. Some were very well known, others less so, and one distinctly art house. They all looked great on the Curo. I might have thought that they weren't quite Blu-ray quality, but there was nothing about the picture that would have affected my enjoyment. Good detail, nice colours, and being a Kuro, very deep blacks. But the sound! It was dreadful. Good frequency range, low noise, no obvious distortion. But digital artefacts, it was digital artefacts all the way. These artefacts have a number of common names. Underwater sound, swirling, birdies, warbles. You'll hear them in audio encoded with MP3 at too low a bitrate. AAC is better, but still, if the bitrate is too low, you'll hear artefacts. These artefacts are worst on random sounds, like noise, wind, seashore, woodland atmosphere, and they really do spoil everything. I had to wonder why the picture was so good and the audio so dreadful. Where did these clips come from? Downloaded from the internet, from pirate sites. That's why all this secrecy. I have to say that doing this kind of thing for legitimate research purposes may be legal in some jurisdictions, but Betty wasn't taking any chances. Betty explained how this works. A pirate will rip a Blu-ray or stream to their computer. A standard Blu-ray can contain up to 25 gigabytes of data, so these will be large files. The pirate will then re-encode the video and audio into a smaller file size, typically around 2 gigabytes. The video codec will probably be H.264, H.264 to give it its full title, or H.265, sometimes known as high efficiency video coding, which can reduce the data to even smaller file sizes and the picture still looks good. For audio, the codec will usually be AAC, Advanced Audio Coding, or AAC-LC, which is the low complexity profile. The problem isn't with the coding, it's the bitrate. Commonly the bitrate will be less than 100 kilobits per second. Really, that's not enough for a cinematic soundtrack. So the pirate wants to pack the movie into a small file size, but prioritises video over audio. The movie looks great and sounds <laughs> Betty told me that it isn't always like this, and some pirated movies look good and sound good. So obviously, in these cases, the pirate has a certain amount of audio intelligence. Put your hood back on. It's time to go. OK. I'd seen enough and heard enough. Betty assured me that the data would be destroyed before it had any chance to get out into the big, wide world. There'd be no chance of me including it in this video. Don't be so stupid. My conclusion is that I hear great sound on Blu-ray discs, perfectly adequate sound on streaming services. Why would I want to spoil my enjoyment with the substandard audio of a pirate copy? I'll leave the last word to Betty. R. See you soon. That wasn't very good, was it? R. R.